Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wake Up Wednesday. I sure hope you can wake up because I'm having a tough time today. Yeah, you'd have a tough time too if you had to watch your favorite hockey team play into the third overtime period. Guess what? We won. Victory is ours. Victory. Well, hey, that's what comes through in our lesson from Revelation this coming Sunday. Victory. It's also the word salvation. Huh. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? And God gives us the victory. God gives us salvation through the lamb who was slaughtered, but now lives. Yes. Okay. So what's going on in this letter that's written to the uh, seven churches, the book of Revelation? Well, what we have is an interesting portion of this book. Last week, we had all this singing and dancing and everybody's jumping for joy. Um, and all of a sudden, well, the reason for that was the fact that there was someone worthy to to take the seals off of the scroll. They could take these seven seals off and that would reveal God's plan of action for all his creation, this wonderful thing he's about to do. Only the problem is, as these seals come off one by one, it's not such a pleasant picture. There's a lot of destruction and awful stuff that happens. And it's time now to open the seventh seal. But wait, wait, all of a sudden there's this little pause in the action and we have um just beautiful beautiful things happening and and good news for the people the fact that victory is ours uh it starts out with a the the weird thing that often gets misinterpreted and i think a lot of interpretations thrown on it that really don't belong there the hundred and forty four thousand uh, th that's something it's, that scholars have long debated. What exactly does that mean? And whenever you see big numbers like that in Scripture, just know that for the most part, it means a lot, a lot. So there's um, 12,000 people from each of the 12 tribes, 12 times 12, 144,000, who have been sealed. That means they're, they're um, marked as safe, <laughs> if you will. But here's the important part. So many people interpret that as, well, there's only 144,000 going to heaven. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Right after that, look at what it says. After this, I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb. You couldn't count them. It wasn't just 144 thousands. It's millions and millions and billions and billions. You can't count them. Too many to count. What an awesome promise. And the thing is, these people coming from all places and all tribes and all languages and all nations, what brings them together? Well, for one thing, they're all dressed in white, white robes, and that's highly symbolic throughout scriptures, that's newness of life, that you've been pulled back into the family, that you've been rescued, that you've been redeemed, that you've been saved, all those types of things. And they're holding palm branches in their hands. Now, why is that important? Hey, we just had Palm Sunday a little while ago, right? Well, palm branches were a part of some of the early Jewish uh, celebrations, but also the palm branches were used when you would be celebrating the coming of the king, uh, Caesar, what? We're going to use palm branches? and No, because the king isn't Caesar. The king is the lamb who was slain, Jesus. That's who the king is. And, and again, they break forth in song. Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And now that's the second time we have this shouting forth in song with seven different words that are, are attributed and given to our God, to the Lamb. 
blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, and power. Only the order is a little bit different this time. The first time in chapter 5, might was in the middle. And this time it's thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for what? Because as we read on in this passage, those who have come through some very difficult moments, those who have come through the, the great ordeal, the time of trial, They've washed their robes in the blood of the lamb and washing them in the blood made it white. Hey, I don't know about you, when I'm outside trying to yank those eggs out from underneath the chickens and they start pecking away at my hand, it gets pretty, pretty red. <laughs> blood doesn't make anything white. It turns it, it stains it. It's, it's ruined unless you can get that blood out real fast. But wait a minute. The blood of the Lamb is what cleanses us from sin, that that makes us um, reconciled back to God. And for this reason, that there all these people now are before the throne of God, giving Him praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving and might and all that stuff. Right? This is one grand and glorious scene. Something. A lot like we had a couple of chapters ago last week when we looked at, at chapter 5. But here's the kicker. This is what is to be. It's what is now and what is going to be. Here we go. They will hunger no more and they will thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. Remember, this is the Palestine area. This is where you lived day to day uh, just trying to feed yourself. So now no more worries about hungering or having anything to drink. Um, it's all going to be provided for. And hot, scorching sun. I mean, we like to go out and sunbathe, right? Ah, hey, they had to worry about getting out of the sun just to survive. Don't have to worry about that. The lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. Ah, that's the tie-in to our gospel lesson this coming Sunday. Good Shepherd Sunday. And he will guide them to the springs of the water of life. And here's the best thing of all. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Looking back at that passage in Isaiah where death will be no more and God will be wiping away our tears. Yep. Victory, salvation is ours. And that's a part of what's in our lesson today as well. So it is time to rejoice. I don't care if it's raining outside. It's going to be one grand and glorious day, not just today, but every day for those who live in God's kingdom. God's blessings be with you.